All right, guys, I don't talk about wilderness knives all too much, and so this will definitely be an exception of a video. But today I thought it would be fun to break down from a wide plethora of brands and makers what is the best survival knife brand in the year 2023. Now I'm going to be doing this video and it's probably going to take a little bit to go through everything, but I thought the best thing to do at first is eliminate the brands that I do not think are worth buying at all. And I'll give you some rationale. So the first one is Gerber, and that's because I hate Gerber. These guys didn't sprint. These guys never sponsored me, and that made me mad. Just kidding. I'm ultimately joking about pretty much everything I said there, aside from not recommending Gerber. And the primary reason I don't recommend Gerber, as you can see my well-loved LMF2 here, is primarily because I just don't think that their products are as trustworthy as they are promoted to be. In the end, if you end up with a Gerber like this one, it will probably serve you well, but it probably will not be the type of knife to really meet your needs. In addition to, I just really hate the ergonomics of Gerber, most Gerber knives. So I don't think that uh, these are the most conducive to survival situations, not to mention on the uh, good old LMF2, it is a partially serrated blade and it's like a 60, 40% serrated blade. So quite a bit of it is serrated and that is ultimately no bueno for me personally. However, there are things like the strong arm and the strong arm is a decent knife but once again it's a little bit small in my opinion for a really good field survival knife and i don't really think that it is the best choice that you can make out there especially considering the price of these gerber blades like the lmf2 and the strong arm are well over a hundred dollars would not recommend this brand at all all right, next one up is going to be Spyderco. Now, I actually love Spyderco from an EDC standpoint and perspective, and this guy here is the good old North Fork. And the North Fork is, in fairness, probably not the best representation of a survival knife in particular, because this is really more of a sharp finger kind of skinning knife, uh, filleting knife almost due to how thin it is. However, the problem with the uh, Spyderco as a whole when it comes to survival knives is, once again, most of their designs designs for wilderness and outdoor applications are just a little bit too small and uh, they don't tend to be or Spyderco as a whole tends to lean towards things like full flat grinds like this one here and that just ends up leading to a very thin very keen edge but it can be fairly prone to breaking when you don't have a lot of material in general to work with. So by and large, there are a few gems in there. The Spyderco Bushcraft and Proficient, which are no longer made anymore, would be, I would say, exceptions to the rule. However, they did make like a Puko knife that was not good at all. And the blade actually chipped out a lot because they went with the true zero grind Scandinavian grind for that blade. All right, next one up is Buck, unfortunately. Now, in my opinion, if you are able to find a Buck Hoodlum, a Buck Thug, like this guy, or a Buck Punk, these blades are probably some of the best wilderness survival blades out there that you could buy, especially for a reasonable price. If you can get them for like under $200, around $200, these are some of the best blades that you can get. Primarily because unlike many other knife manufacturers, they made these out of 5160 spring steel and that makes them incredibly shock resistant and incredibly resilient to just absolute pounding and abuse. And moreover, Tops was the actual OEM for these blades. So if you like Tops knives, this is technically labeled a buck, but this was actually contracted out to Tops at the time when these were being made in the early 2010s. And they are just fantastic. Now I did say originally with the Spider Co's that I'm not a huge fan of full flat grinds, but given that this is 5160 spring steel, it is going to be incredibly resilient. And I actually kind of 
like the full flat grind nature of this knife because it really thins out and makes a super, super slicey edge, which does take away from its chopping abilities a little bit, but it does help with its knife tasks overall. So that is the Buck Thug. As you can see, mine is very, very well loved. I love how people love to sit on the comments in the YouTube or in the comments section below and they're like, oh, that guy never uses his knives. And they always do it in like these types of videos where I'm literally showing you a knife that looks like it's been through hell. Like I, you can't win them all guys. You cannot win them all. <laughs> Anywho, so Buck is lower on the list though because things like the 119 are just not really um, cutting it for a good survival blade. Once again, a little bit small and uh, not quite a preferred steel. 420HC is not my favorite. That's also, should, it's worth noting, that goes for Gerber too. They use 420HC like it's going out of style and I cannot stand that. All right, next one up is going to be K-Bar. K-Bar, in my opinion, is, and this is not the best representation, but I have sold off many of my Wilderness Blades. However, if you land on any of the Becker, like the BK-18, BK-17, BK-16, BK-2, BK-7, BK-9, the all of the Becker knives that are made by K-Bar are really solid survival blades. Um, in my opinion, the BK-2 is a little bit small and I probably wouldn't go for it, but if you are looking for a smaller survival blade, the BK-16, 18, 17, if you can find it are all really really fantastic options to go for for a slightly smaller um, wilderness field blade but especially the bk9 the bk7 um, are going to be really really solid options very hard to beat they use the 1095 crovan which is the same steel that the k bars are made out of and a lot of people love to just absolutely hate on k bar but 1095 crovan is actually a pretty cool steel because the crovan stands for chromium and vanadium so it is a 1095 that is slightly more not completely rust proof but it has more chromium so it gives it better um, corrosion resistance and also the vanadium helps with increased wear resistance and shock resistance so crovan steel or 1095 crovan is a steel that a lot of people just sit there and hate on um, k-bar because they think that they're old they're antiquated and don't get me wrong i'm not a huge or the largest fan of the like usmc fighting knife like this one but the better blades by like becker uh like the bk line are really solid knives and they are are honestly like if you're on a budget some of the better blades to choose from sticking in line with better blades to choose from if you are on a budget is going to be or the next one is the Ontario Knife Company or OKC Rat Line now there are a few other lines that OKC makes um, such as the Artax uh, with Artax 2 is another one that's a very venerable kind of addition to this list but by and large these are kind of midway in the selection because I do think that they are from a design standpoint, obviously very capable um, survival knives. However, the more budget ones like this guy come in 1075 high carbon, and that was primarily done to keep the costs low. But uh, unfortunately, that kind of does degrade their performance a bit with edge retention and increases their, or I should say lessens their corrosion resistance. However, I, I put these in the middle section because they do offer the Rat 7 especially, but many of the Rat lineup in in a new version that, that's made out of CPM S35VN. So those are, as far as CPM S35VN blades go, those are still reasonably budget. They're obviously more expensive than the more uh, budget 1075 versions, but those ones are going to be like a step up if you still like this design and want that increased performance. However, I will, however, I will also note that a lot of the SC knives, which are the successors to the RAT lineup, are also offered in CPM S35, which we'll get to in a little bit, but overall, these are pretty good. They're a little bit rough around the edges, like the handle contouring isn't quite as good as an SC. Um, it's also just a little bit thicker, and of course, your sheaths are not gonna be as nice at all. However, something like the RAT 7 is pretty cool because they don't make an SC7, so if you're looking for that around K-bar sized blade length to conquer large tasks this is going to be where it's at and like I said they honestly are pretty darn solid there are definitely far worse choices you can make when it comes to survival blades these are solid meh <laughs> 
All right, so next ones up are gonna be basically Condor and Mora. And I'm kind of like at about equal with these two. Um, they're not bad knives at all. However, the thing with Condor and Mora is they don't really specialize into like survival knives, but they do have some incredibly good bushcrafting knives like the Condor Pterosaur. That would not be a half, blade, half bad field blade for survival. So the Condor Pterosaur is really good. In addition to Condor, in my opinion, is probably one of your go-to sources if you're looking for like survival machetes or larger, like not quite knives anymore. Like I said, definitely specking into like choppers, uh, machetes, those kinds of things are going to be found with Condor. However, something like the Pterosaur is often slept on in a really good field blade as a whole. Once again, talking about it, Mora is in a similar boat although they don't have any of the like chopper slash machete side of things they do have a few good offerings such as the garberg the cons bull the bushcraft black and i think a lot of people look at these knives and they're like oh you know that's not a full tang it's gonna break but honestly this knife i've pounded on and my hand has gone numb before this blade has broken so i figure in most real survival situations i'm probably gonna stop at my hand going numb as opposed to the blade Blade breaking so anyways these are very tough blades very robust and honestly uh, something like this uh, something like this bushcraft black is made out of c100 which is the european equivalent to 1095 and uh, it is dlc coated for rust resistance and it does a good job honestly i really like the uh, bushcraft black it's a solid blade and uh, definitely definitely like as far as and as far as it goes, Mora definitely makes some really venerable survival options out there. All right, so now we're jumping into kind of the finale. These are like the top six. I know most people are like, oh, don't you mean top five? But for me, there's like top six brands out there that really are quite squared away. And of course, there are probably more brands that I'm forgetting, but these are some of the most notable ones, at least that are in my collection right now. So let's jump into the first one, the budget, and that is Cold Steel. Now, Cold Steel has been rebranded, but by and large, their quality still seems to be there. Their price points are still there. Of course, inflation has brought their prices up. I still remember buying this here SRK uh, in, what is this, SK5 High Carbon, and um, Gosh, I remember getting this thing for like 35 bucks. They are definitely not that cheap anymore, but these guys are really solid. I've already talked at nauseum in other videos about the huge history behind these. Are they the most sheer durable survival knife? No, they're not as strong as a Gerber strong arm, but they are realistically strong enough to do anything that you need to do out in the wilderness. And once again, being their price is still cheaper than things like the strong arm, still cheaper than a lot of, even of the more budget knives I've already talked about, like the Becker series or BK series. Um, these guys just have so many pros to them that it's hard to um, really summarize in a short little video like this. But the SR, but the SRK, primarily the full size SRK, wasn't a huge fan of the SRKC, but the SRK itself is a great knife and really led the way for the Falcon even A1, which we'll get to in just a little bit. So really cool blade, well used, well regarded by many people in the knife community. All right, next up, and we're just going in like order of how much I like these knives using these knives in each individual brand. The next one up is going to be half face blades. Now half face blades is definitely higher end expensive than most of the other knives here. And that's why I put it so low on this list. Now don't get me wrong, these knives and I really try to convey this, even though I'm very critical of half face blades, they are still really good knives. Like they use quality materials. Everything is well done. There's just a few slips in their like overall build quality that I dislike and once again for the price you're paying because of this is going to be the most expensive next to I think maybe the Chris Reeve knives Pacific like those two are going to be equally priced or I should say this Crow Scout and the Pacific are going to be pretty equally priced um, because it has like few little like flaws in it and it's just not quite up to spec as the Pacific uh, that's why I place it a bit lower however if you do have have half face blades they are solid they are good they're just a bit overpriced in my opinion 
So anyways, that's why half face blades is this low on the list. However, I will say, and I will give them props, they do have a wide variance in like big number or large number of blades that would perform very well for wilderness survival tasks. The Crow Scout being one of them. All right. <laughs> Next one up is going to be Bark River Knives. Bark River Knives is probably one of my favorites and it's kind of hard because we're really just splitting hairs at this point with most of these brands because they have such a wide variance in different models. They make machetes, choppers, hatchets, um, knives, you know, just general field knives like this Bravo one, but they make really high quality blades to fit just about any need or purpose and they make them in a wide variety of different blade steels, handle materials. And so getting something that's spec to meet your needs is pretty easy with these guys. So this in particular is, like I said, a Bravo one, and I really like it for field craft and general purpose um, wilderness tasks. But of course, there are a wide variety of different knives out there. I would say if you're wanting more of a true survival knife, probably the Bravo 1.5 is going to edge the Bravo 1 out, but they're both pretty amazing. And overall, I know that there's a lot of complaints from different people who feel disgruntled about Bark River knives, but to be honest, they've never rubbed me the wrong way. They've always treated me well, even um, when I've like snapped the tip off of knives that I shouldn't have um, really been messing with the tip that much. You know, they still replace them free of charge. So they have a pretty bulletproof warranty as well, and that is worth noting too. All right, finally coming to an end, we got the last three here. And last one, or like the third place of the top three is going to be Falkneven. And Falkneven, in my opinion, once again, despite what some people will say, you know, these might not be the most out and out durable knives that can take the hardest beatings or the greatest abuse, but they offer a number of really huge pros to them. First off, they're very thick, very chunky, which does make them surprisingly durable, um, more durable than most people would think. In addition to, they're one of the few companies that so long as you don't get the pro models, they have a fully rubberized handle, which means that they are really good for use in, um, in colder climates or at least in colder weather. And they're also very large, very spacious handles, so you can use them with things like mittens, which is something that I think most companies making knives overlook. And granted, places like Alaska, Sweden, and Scandinavia as a whole are, you know, they don't take up the most or the majority of the world, so it's easy to overlook the Arctic climates but it is nice to have a knife that fits well into Arctic climates. In addition to that though, things like the A1, like I said, very thick, very good for chopping. They also have a very nice convex grind that is not only sharp, but also really does help if you are trying to chop things down. I'm not necessarily saying you should do that with your knives, but if you have to do it in a pinch, these knives do work really well for that. The only thing that I really have against them is I dislike their sheaths. Their sheaths are very old school and antiquated for the time times and also their prices are pretty darn steep so those are some definite uh, cons to them all right next one up is going to be se now se as I had alluded to before, is a kind of spinoff of Randall's Adventure Training or the Rat series of knives made by Ontario Knife Company. And these are essentially the successors, but they are very, very well built, well thought out. They come in either 1095 or S CPM S35VN. And I've heard rumors that they're going to start coming in Magna Cut too. And if that's the case, these things are absolutely gonna blow the competition out of the water. But uh, whether it's the 1095 CPM S35VN uh, or other steels, they are very well made. The handles are very well contoured. The sheaths are nice. And you basically, if you're buying an SC, any of them from the SC3, Zula, all the way up to the Hunglis um, or the Hunglis 2, you know, you're going to get a well equipped, solid, ready to go knife that is going to be able to perform well in things like survival and wilderness training or uh, wilderness living 
tasks. So all of them come very well squared away. And I think one of the biggest things that I love to mention when it comes down to SE, when we talk about SE, is the fact that they are one of the few knife companies in the outdoors that truly all of these models are made by survivalists and search and rescue for survivalist and search and rescue. Like these blades are made by a company that teaches and the, the owners of that company are active in search and rescue and wilderness survival, wilderness living, but they actively teach those things. And so these knives are made by those same people. So lots of years of experience built into these knives and that's what makes them incredibly awesome. All right, last one up on the list, and my personal favorite is Chris Reeve Knives. Now, Chris Reeve Knives is probably better known for their EDC knives, like the Incosi, the Sabenza, the Umnum Zahn, and I have an Incosi and Sabenza as well. I love those knives for EDC, but the Pacific is a totally different knife, and it is still to the same level and build quality of a folding knife by Chris Reeve, but it's very well thought out, made by Bill Harsey, or designed, I should say, made by Chris Reeve, obviously obviously, but designed by Bill Harsey to be an ultimate, uh, like basically troop knife or combat knife that duels in survival very well. And some of the things I really love about this knife that are very uncommon in survival knives is one, it's hollow grind. And two, at the time when it came out, it came out in um, CPM S35 VN, which was something that no one else was using for wilderness survival combat knives, or I should say very few companies were using. Now it's bit more mainstream but uh, and these guys are also now in 4v which is arguably better um, for, at least for wear resistance and toughness but overall these guys have an absolute incredibly good ergonomic feel and fit to them and they just work so well at least for me in my opinion this knife fits me like a glove and I can just hold it and do just about any wilderness task that I need to do, whether it's skinning an animal, starting a fire, batoning through wood. Um, like I said, that hollow grind, it is very untypical to see wilderness blades with a hollow grind, but I think so long as your heat treat is good and your steel is good, having a hollow grind doesn't really impact the durability. And I know that for a fact. Um, and also, it really helps with slicing because the hollow grind is even thinner than a full flat grind because you're removing a lot of material off of essentially the center area of the grind. And so you're left with a super thin, super slicey blade that can curl wood and do amazing feather sticks. Also, once again, when it comes down to like processing game animals, it's going to slice very, very nicely. So anyways, the Chris Reeve Knives Pacific is my top one in the brand as a whole, whether it's the Green Beret or the Pacific or other fixed blades that they make, they do, believe it or not, actually have quite a heritage in making different uh, wilderness blades. I won't go into that too much in this video, but uh, they do make good survival knives. And if you can get them, that's probably the hardest part is these knives are a bit of a unicorn because they're so rare. Um, they are extremely hard to get. And if you want a new Pacific ordering one, direct is like a six year wait from Chris Reeve. So it is not easy to get one of these. And uh, that's probably the biggest disadvantage of them. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you enjoyed talking a lot about many brands of survival knives out there. Um, I still have quite a few wilderness blades, but uh, yeah, as always, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. God bless, and I'm out.